Check this out, this is B-Roll Doggo. I got her on Amazon, Amazon primed her here. If you want 15% uh, off, I have a referral link in the link below. I absolutely hate when that happens. I'm trying to edit a basic transition on my laptop and the thing will not work. It's 2019, most mid to high level cameras are shooting 4K, maybe even 8K. What do you do when you can't afford a $10,000 built PC to work, to, to edit that? A lot of people who are starting off, when I started off at least, I was using a laptop with low RAM, not, not a good processor, just all I had, but I had a camera that was really good and was recording 4K. When I was trying to edit it, all I would do is scrub through and the thing would glitch, my computer would heat up, program would crash, and it was just terrible. The files were so heavy, it was a whole mess. So I'm going to show you a trick to make DaVinci Resolve much cleaner, much faster. It will not solve all your problems, but it will definitely make your experience a little better. We're gonna use something called Render Cache. When your system requests a file, so let's say you're requesting a clip and you're pulling it into your timeline and you click play, the first thing that happens is you're requesting that file from the disk. Then it gets pulled into memory once it's found, and in memory you can access it and you can use it in your application. But that's a heavy process to do every single time when the memory gets cleared. So you can have the memory get cleared every couple seconds when you pause, and every time you unpause, it has to do the whole thing again, and if you unpause and pause within a couple seconds really fast, that can even cause something to crash. With render caching, what happens is, first step, it goes to the storage, it finds the file, and it pulls it into memory. But when it pulls it into memory, it also makes a copy into the cache. And now, every single time you need that file, instead of going through the whole process, you're just gonna go straight to the cache, get it, and come back. It's almost like you're telling your computer, hey, I'm gonna need this in a minute, don't remove it, it's gonna be much faster. And your computer will store it there either until you remove it, either until your cache clears itself, but at least while you're using the application, it's gonna be so much smoother, even if your laptop can't really handle high, you know, high resolution footage. Of course, you can proxy your footage, but sometimes you wanna have it in the max resolution. For those who don't know what a proxy is, it's when you record something in 4K, but you bring it down to like 1080 so your computer can handle it. I'm not a fan of proxying my footage. I rather cache my footage and be able to edit it at its max resolution. I mean, I recorded it at that resolution. I want to see it in that resolution. Quickly, if you want to help me out, you can like the video, help me get back in that YouTube algorithm. I'm doing my best to post every day, but I did get my Amazon doggo last week and it's been a real hassle trying to take care of. Okay, so at the starting of the video, you guys saw me really frustrated with how this clip was not playing properly and once in a while it will once in a while it won't i have a pretty good setup davinci resolve runs off of gpu and i have a good gpu but it still does this jittering stuttering and it's really really frustrating and i know you guys want to see this happen so i'm going to show you right away see how it's jittering it's not being fast it's not smooth at all what we're going to do is we're going to go to the top playback and then we're going to go into render cache and we can have two choices, smart or user. Smart is where a little bit of machine learning tries to see what clips it should cache and what clips it wouldn't. I'm not a fan of it. I don't think it's perfected yet. I think it's a really smart idea and they should continue with it, but it's not there yet. So I want to put it on user. Then in, you know, for this current part, I'm editing this clip right here. I know the rest is red. It's because I don't have them anymore. I already posted this video, but this is just an example. So we're going to click on the clip that we want to render and you have two options here render cache color output and render cache fusion output depending on what you're doing uh it depends which one you should use i def definitely recommend looking into what each one does i'm not going to go over those but it's pretty obvious fusion is uh with fusion so like the after effects of going to resolve and color output is if you do some changes to the color i usually have color output on and in this case, I will be putting Fusion on. I should say that you shouldn't render, you shouldn't cache the whole timeline. It can get pretty heavy on your computer. You can see how mine has a bit of a delay. So I am going to turn it off. It's super smooth. And depending on which computer you're using, 
you might want to render the whole thing or just render clip by clip. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I'm going to be showing more tips and tricks for DaVinci Resolve. And if you, if there's any Premiere Pro users out there, let me know. I could do a bunch of stuff on that too. I've been using Premiere Pro now for the past couple months. And now I'm moving to DaVinci Resolve just because of this color panel. See you guys in the next one. If you guys are big movie or show fanatics, I'm going to be starting something new, a new playlist where I edit towards a movie that you enjoy. So the movie Drive with Ryan Gosling, amazing movie. The color correction is very specific. The editing and the acting is very specific. So I'm going to remake that on my channel. I'm going to show you guys how I do everything, every single step. And each time we're going to make a different episode.